So I wanted to share a, a interesting story about this project, right? We have a bunch of different contributors who have been pushing code to help add features to this code racer application. And at some point we just had too much code changing too fast. That stuff would constantly break on production, right? We get PRs in, I, you know, kind of try to review them. I merge them in and then stuff would be broken. Which makes sense. I mean, if you have all these random people contributing to the project, there's a high chance that someone's going to change some functionality that they're not familiar with and they're going to break the app for everyone else. So at some point you have to kind of stop and say, okay, is this a time that we need to write some type of tests? And in this situation, I think we did reach a point where there's enough code, there's enough pages, there's enough complexity where the project would benefit from writing some type of test. So I did ask some people to try to do that. And that is exactly what they did. They went in here and they added some tests. So if you go into this packages directory, we have the app, which holds the Next.js application and the WebSocket server here. This is like a, an NPM workspaces monorepo approach. So if you do want to kind of look through and understand how the monorepo is set up, you can do that on this project. Not perfect, but it's just a good starting point. But inside of the Next.js application, there is a Cypress directory. Now Cypress, Cypress is a test runner, right? So you can basically write tests. It's going to load a browser. It's going to click around and automate everything for you. Um, let's just go ahead and show you what the contributors set up on this project. I'll say npm run Cypress. And that's going to basically launch Cypress, okay? So behind the scenes, this is basically a Chromium browser. And this project has two tests set up. I think there's a page test and there's like an app test. I haven't really looked too hard through this, but what this does and what this can allow your team to do is as you're writing features, you have these things, these Cypress tests run in your CI CD pipeline so that it's going to click through your app and make sure that nothing broke. Okay. So let me just kind of show you how this works. I'm going to click on app here. This is one of the tests. And what this is doing is basically going to localhost 3000 and it's clicking around to make sure that pages will load. Okay. These are all server side rendered pages and they do actually connect to a database and, you know, fetch data and send that back. So even having like a basic test, which kind of clicks on every single page to make sure stuff doesn't crash is a good initial test suite to have, right? I would say that as you get more familiar with writing tests, you're going to have to write more user journeys. So for example, um, if someone wanted to write tests where someone logs in, they go to start a practice, they start typing in some, some keys for the snippet, and then they get to a results page. That's something that you could potentially do. It's always easier said than done. Let's go back to all the tests over here. There's another one over here. So I'll click this one. This test is a little bit more involved, but it looks like what is happening is that it goes to this contributors page and then it verifies that certain things are showing up. So for example, he hovers over or he focuses on this user and he verifies that the list contains something. And then over here, he says he can click on the contributors card and redirect to the GitHub profile page. So as I kind of hover over this, you'll see what the test is doing is it actually hovers over this. It clicks this card and then it verifies that we get redirected to this new URL right here. Okay. Here is another Cypress test, which can click on the contributors card and click on any commit message and get redirected to that GitHub commit page. So again, I guess you can clicks on a card. So this one I think uh, hovers over a card and then clicks on something in the list. And then it verifies that the page that we get redirected to includes, maybe this isn't the most robust check here, but at least it's checking some stuff. So what I'm trying to say in this video is at some point when your stuff starts breaking all the time in production and you have a bunch of contributors all trying to push code and change stuff and you just notice stuff just keeps breaking, you have to keep on going back and fixing it. That is a good sign that you need to write some type of automated testing. So there's a whole debate about what type of testing you should do. Um, the more traditional approach that you've probably seen from like Martin Fowler and a bunch of the older developers, the more seasoned developers is they say, write a bunch of unit tests, write, you know, a little bit less integration tests and then write as little end to end tests as possible. But there's another philosophy from Ken C. Dodds who says, Integration tests are probably the most important tests, right? The unit tests are still important. End-to-end -end tests are also important. But as far as what you're writing, you want to be using something like TypeScript. So you have a bunch of static checks. And then you also want to have a bunch of integration tests. Now, for the longest time, I thought this pyramid was like the gold standard. But then as you actually start building out larger applications, you start to realize that 
you can have a completely broken application and all your unit tests will pass. Okay, it's very easy to write unit tests that like verify a function, but when you have two functions that are talking to each other, something could break, right? So I, although I do find unit tests very useful in a lot of situations, for example, if you have like a pure function that takes in some inputs as parameters and it gives you out some outputs, that's a good example of when you can unit test it. Now, if it's a function that does a ton of side effects, unit testing is probably not as useful because you end up just mocking everything out anyway. And then in your test, you just have like a bunch of like verify your spy got called, verify this mock got called. So I personally am leaning a lot more towards this testing trophy. I think the integration tests are by far the most important types of tests you can have in your system. They actually verify that everything is linked up properly and an integration test, in my opinion, give you the most confidence that your system is working well. Now, end-to-end -end tests can also give you a ton of confidence because this is actually like clicking through your UI and going all the way to the back into the database and verifying that everything is linked together correctly. And if you do this on like a deployed environment, like an end-to-end -end test, we call them smoke tests where we work, just to verify that if you use a bunch of different AWS services, all those things all hook together properly. Can you go through and click something that hits, you know, five different AWS services? Is all the configuration and Terraform set up correctly? Did everything deploy successfully? That's something that's really good with like smoke tests and end-to-end -end tests. But I will say that we have also spent a ton of time trying to fix flaky Cypress and end-to-end -end tests. So I do think it's like a, a juggling act where you'd want to have some end-to-end -end tests, but a lot of the times you'll write these tests and like they just fail. And then you have to like write retry logic and then you just waste a bunch of time trying to figure out why these tests are failing. Every project that I've been on since I started coding for the past 10 years has always had tests. We have like 96% code coverage for unit tests. We have a ton of integration tests and we have some end-to-end -end tests in our project. I would say that these are like the biggest bang for your buck. They might be a little bit more difficult to write compared to unit tests, but they actually test real interactions between your system. And when stuff is not correctly hooked up or working correctly, you will see these tests fail and you'll be glad that you have those integration tests set up. Anyway, that's my spiel on testing and, um, and you know why at this point we should probably add more tests to this project. It's just grown too large and code is moving too fast. That is good to have in the pull request some type of check that runs to verify that people aren't breaking stuff. And, um, and then also if you've done testing on your project, definitely leave a comment. I'm curious to hear what you think about testing, which of these paradigms do you try to follow on your project and then i also kind of suggest that you kind of like question your testing paradigms and your testing styles in your project and really really get down to the core of it it's like is all this unit testing you're doing is it really helpful or is it more of like a thing that we do just because we want code coverage um, that's all i got to say if you want to join my discord the link is in my description it's a cool place you can go to find other developers and ask questions if you're trying to learn how to code. Yeah, other than that, feel free to contribute to this project. If you want to actually commit code to Code Racer, the uh, link will be in the description below as well. Have a good day and happy coding.